How y'all doing today? It's your boy Eat Right Guy and I'm back with another video. For this video, I will be responding to a comment that was left in one of my previous videos. So the comment goes, can you also explain about calcium and iron interactions? Most of us drink milkshakes with fruits, dry fruits, nuts, and greens blended together. Will there be any nutrient absorption? As we know, calcium and iron should not be taken together. Can you please throw some light on this topic? Thanks. All right, so uh, that was a good question. And uh, to start off this video, I just wanna discuss the two different types of irons and then we can transition into the iron and calcium um, interaction, uh, I guess, information. And so for one, you have heme iron and you have non-heme iron. So heme iron is found only in animals. And this is because this is the iron that's attached to hemoglobin, which hemoglobin is part of red blood cells. So any kind of animal that has blood is gonna have heme iron. And heme iron is the most uh, bioavailable or the most easily absorbable form of iron. Then you have non-heme iron, which is iron that's not attached to hemoglobin. And this is the iron that you get from eating plants. And so unlike the heme iron, this iron is not that bioavailable. Um, so it you don't absorb it as well as the heme iron. So like if you ever take like nutrition classes and things like that, they always recommend that you get your iron from the heme sources with your meats in order to prevent anemia. Um, that is something that I disagree with. Uh, I definitely think that you can get all your sources from non-heme iron and not have to worry about that. I haven't consumed any heme iron in three years and whenever I get my blood work done, my hemoglobin is in the normal range, my iron levels, my ferritin, transferritin, all that's in the normal range and I don't eat any heme iron. And so the transition, um, if you do follow like a plant-based diet and all your iron sources are from the non-heme um, type, there are ways in which you can increase the bioavailability of non-heme iron. And you have two ways. You can eat foods that are more acidic, so things like tomatoes and citrus, that will increase the bioavailability of non-heme iron. Also, you can eat foods that are high in vitamin C. And those are usually foods also that are acidic. So um, things like tomatoes, tomato sauce, oranges, orange juice, uh, broccoli, peppers, sweet potatoes, all those are high in vitamin C and they will greatly increase the bioavailability of non-heme iron. And so now we can get into the interaction between taking calcium with iron. And, um, and so the non-heme iron is gonna be more uh, impacted by the calcium, so we'll just focus that on the non-heme. So I looked at some research um, and for some reason, a lot of these research studies were done in like the 90s. I couldn't really find any new studies. And I found some short-term studies that showed that um, people that consumed about 165 milligrams of calcium, whether it be from milk, cheese, or actually supplements um, with iron, especially the non-heme version, it decreased the bioavailability or the absorption of this non-heme iron by 50 to 60%. But then as I kept looking, I found some long, I found a long-term meta-analysis that showed that consuming calcium and iron together over the long term does not impact your iron status. So that's kind of um, you know what I'm saying, a weird dynamic. It's a lot of conflicting information on this topic. I know that, you know what I'm saying, studying for my registered dietitian exam. One of the questions that I had was for infants um, who experience anemia, one of the most common causes is excessive intake of cow's milk. And I think one of the components is that it's because of the high calcium content. And so, I don't know, I'm not really sure, uh, you know what I'm saying? What if you should be consuming calcium and iron together? I definitely think that they have similar binding sites, so there can be an interaction there from that level. But I feel like if you're, you know what I'm saying? If you're taking them both together, if you also take in a source of vitamin C, 
I think that it can counteract whatever interactions the iron and calcium can have. And so I don't want to say that, you know what, you need to always take your calcium and iron away from each other, but you know what I'm saying? It, it probably wouldn't hurt, but like the research, you know what I'm saying? is kind of conflicting. So my recommendations is if you are somebody that's anemic, um, I would just, you know what I'm saying? You take calcium, um, supplements the calcium supplements are going to be in a non-heme form i would probably take that away from calcium just to make sure and also if you take like that iron pill drink like some orange juice or eat a fruit that's high in vitamin c and then you know what i'm saying if you want to drink milk or even if it's almond milk drink that maybe two hours um after just to be safe but in terms of just like making a smoothie that may contain like almond milk that's fortified with calcium and stuff like that and you mix it with different plant-based sources of non-heme iron I, i'm not sure if it makes a big difference in the long term because a lot of those vegetables that you're going to use also has vitamin c which is going to boost the bioavailability of that iron so hopefully this video answered your question you have a nice day and if you're a nutrition student or a dietetic intern and you're concerned about passing the rd exam feel free to join my Facebook group, RD Exam Prep, which will be down in the description. And this is where you can be part of a community that will answer any questions that you may have, as well as I provided free study guides, notes, and practice exams. And while you're at it, follow me on Instagram at EatRightGuy and visit my website, EatRightGuy.com, where I post weekly blogs on nutrition and dietetics related topics.